to talk about this knife made by Spyderco. It's a collab with Kevin Smock. It's called the Spyderco Smock. So a lot of people, myself included, have been eagerly awaiting the release of this knife. It's uh, designed by Kevin Smock. He makes his own production run of knives. One of, uh, I guess the, the one this would most closely resemble would be the uh, SK23. They're pretty pricey and extremely hard to get a hold of. He has a pretty long waiting list, so Spyderco mass producing this is a big deal because you can get a hold of Kevin's work at a more affordable price and more readily, right? Like you're not gonna have to wait around on a waiting list forever. I think he did a really good job designing the knife. Uh, there are some things about it that are a little quirky to me, but uh, you know, everybody has their preferences. Today I'd like to go over some of the various design features and the build quality, the pros and cons. Is it worth your money? Is it worth, I think right now they're going for around between 150 to 200 bucks, depending on who you buy it from. If you go through you know, Amazon, any of the knife shops online, the price will vary. You could try to snag one on eBay. But you know, with any knife, there's the biggest question. Is it worth your money? Is it worth spending the money on? Let's go check it out. That is a smooth open. This thing, uh, this thing opens incredibly smoothly. It's just, it's like butter. This is really easy. This is the first knife that I've ever used that has a, uh, the finger flicker isn't a trigger style, it's a front finger flicker. Say that 15 times fast. On a, uh, I'm trying to think if I have one out here right now. You know what? Screw it. Hold on. I'll be right back. Downstairs and back again. All right. So, um, on this knife, you can see this is a uh, ZT0561, designed by Rick Hinder. It's a larger knife, it's, it's much bigger than the uh, Spyderco, but you can see on here, the flicker is on the back. When you go to open it, you would take your finger, put it right here, almost like a light switch, and you press, and it, it kicks the blade open. So there's a, there's a detent in here that keeps retention on the blade, and then when you go to push it, it kicks open. It's part of the blade right there, right? So that finger flicker comes out of the blade, and what Kevin Smock did, was instead of putting it down here, he just basically didn't grind that part off the blade. You can see right there, there's this little tab sticking out. And this knife rides on bearings. It rides on uh, metallic bearings. And as you push that, it kicks open. Super smooth. Like, the opening on this thing is bananas. Um, it has a good amount of retention. It's not gonna just pop out, you know, as you're carrying it, you don't have to worry about it. If you really flick it, you can get it to drop, to gravity drop, but you gotta do it pretty hard. Like, if you fell, you know, out of a vehicle or down a hill or something, you'd probably do that if it was like on a vest or in your pocket, like if you had it on a, attached to you somehow, that might happen, but I don't know. Um, there's something really interesting in here. Spyderco, I, I've never seen a knife that does this, but it actually has two detents, right? So there's, I'll cut a, a picture of the inside of this. I, uh, I do not want to take this apart. There's a lot of stuff going on and there's a really tiny spring that holds the second detent ball in. And I've seen some videos of people taking them apart and it looks like it would be a, a nightmare scenario if that spring got lost or just trying to put it back together. So mo most knives have a single detent ball like this one. I don't think we can see it on either one of them, but there's a uh, basically a little ball bearing that falls into a hole and keeps it it keeps pressure on the blade to keep it from opening, so the the blade won't fly open. <clears throat> there's a bunch of theories online that it may be a legality issue um, because this has we haven't gotten to the lock mechanism on here yet, but it is a button, right? So it has a it has a button lock on 
in here, so you're kind of you're skirting the edge of it becoming a gravity open switchblade sort of knife at that point, where if you're pressing a button in the in the blade. So right now I'm pressing the lock on here, and there it did disengage, but it, it has it has some force to it. It doesn't just drop. When you press the button, it's just not gonna it's not just gonna fall on you, but you have to actually put a little bit of a little bit of oomph into it, and then it'll do it. But uh, yeah, so kind of unique. There's two detents in this knife, which is it's different. It's, it's not bad, but it's just, you know, it wasn't expected by a lot of people, myself included. But yeah, so you have a front flicker on here, and uh, it works extremely well. It works really, really well. I, I'm not a huge fan of these on knives, and even from a reverse grip, I mean, it's a little perilous to pinch it between your fingers like that, but you can open it from a reverse grip pretty easy. Uh, front grip is super easy. A very stylized version of a compression lock. So, like with the uh, the PM2 or PM3, um, the paramilitary knives that Spyderco makes, they have a compression lock. You know what? So here's my PM2, and you can see on the back of this, it's just like a liner lock, but instead of being on this side of the knife, it's on the back, right? So you have your compression lock. So with this, you can actually see what I was talking about. Where if you if you press the compression on here, the blade just drops. Like it, it has zero. It doesn't detent at all. There's no retention. Once you press that lock, it just drops. So I think what they were doing with this is they didn't want to get stuck in the controversy of having a button you could press that would just drop the blade. Um, but like with this one, with the PM2, you can just press down on the, uh, the compression lock and that thing just drops down, which, you know, is a different thing. But they both use compression locks, but in different ways, right? So you can see the compression lock on the uh, PM2. That's the lock itself, that little piece of metal, and as the blade drops in, it fills the space behind the blade and now won't close, all right? And then with this guy, with the smock, it does the exact same thing, but the difference on both of these is that you can see the compression lock on the PM2, you're just taking your finger and pressing against that tab Whereas with the smock, you're pressing a button that's pressing the tab, and it goes in the opposite direction. So on the PM2, the force is traveling that direction against the blade, and on the smock, the force is traveling up that way. So their liners, or they're, not their liners, but their, their locks go opposite directions, right? So the locks are going, it doesn't matter. It's just a different way of doing the same thing, but the release is different. So with the PM2, your finger's going in the back and dropping that compression lock. And with the smock, you're pressing down on this. It's basically a plunge lock, sort of, in a way, and it's bringing it down. It's a little different, plunge lock, but it, it's a similar mechanism. They both use a button. But yeah, so that's how it, uh, that's how it releases. And uh, it's, it's a clever design. It's smart. It's really smart. It's an interesting, interesting design. Feel of this knife, I like it. Um, I'm a bigger fan of blades that are usually four to five inches. This is a pretty petite blade, in my opinion. Um, so let's do a size comparison. PM2, got the uh, the ZT that I had out earlier. There's the smock. Um, here's a here's a ZT 0620, and then. Uh, for fun, here's a uh, here's a Cold Steel Tallwar XL for the size comparison, which makes that doesn't make any sense at all. But I'm just putting it out there for fun. Um, but you can see it's by far the petitest. If we line up the point of the blade on all these, <laughs> to be goofy, let's get this out of here. This is just it's too silly. It's too awesome, but too silly at the same time. This is an awesome knife, which is weird. You can see the smock. It's the smallest by far, right? Like you're losing a good inch, inch and a half to some of these. And if you're looking for a knife that size, then it'll be perfect for you. For me, it's a little tiny. Um, I like my knives a little bit larger, but you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder to each their own. I do like about it um, the handle I, I'm not the hugest fan of these three holes the decorative holes in there they don't I just I like things that serve a purpose I imagine what this would look like 
without the holes in it. And I think it would look pretty nice. Like I think just if it was just solid black and about that solid black handle, it looks like carbon fiber at first. Like you think it's carbon fiber, but it's actually a laminate of carbon fiber over G10, which is a little different. It's a little, little something special, I guess. But uh, what it is, is they basically just took G10 handle material and then laminated carbon fiber on top of it. It has an interesting feel. I mean, if you, if you blindfolded me and gave this to me, I would think it was G10 just off the top of my head. And, like, it doesn't feel any different than standard G10, but it has an interesting look. I almost would have preferred standard G10. Uh, it's not bad. It's not a deal breaker. It's just, it's just a little different. Yeah, the holes in the handle, I mean, that is kind of his signature thing. All of his knives, uh, not all of his knives, but a lot of his knives feature that design thing. And that's just kind of his deal. So, you know, can't fault that. Uh, the opening mechanism is very smooth. Uh, they kind of missed the ball on the spider hole on this. It is thumb operatable, like you can slide it out easy, like you can kind of pivot it out. If you get your thumb in there, you can flick it out to get momentum. Um, trying to do a back finger flick is, is tricky because it's so petite, right? Like compare that to the PM2 and it's really exposed. The PM2 is out there, so when you get your finger underneath there, it's instant, it's very easy. It's, a, it's probably one of my favorite knives to open in that manner, it's very easy to open. Um, this is almost kind of like an afterthought. The finger flicker is definitely the primary form of opening on here, with the spider hole being like, ugh, kind of a backup. It's, it's an effort, you gotta put an effort into getting in there. But if you're not a big, um, like, finger, like, opening person, if you don't really use that function, and you'd rather use the, the front flipper, the front flipper is a joy to use. It is awesome. Like, I am not a huge fan of that type of deployment, and it's cool. Like, you can get it from that angle. You can get it with the, the edge of your ring finger right there, inverted. Like, it's a easy deploy. And closing it is super easy, and it's buttery smooth. Like, it just drops the blade, like, once you hit that, that lock. And it's nice, because you never, your hand is never going to get in the way, in the line of fire of that blade. Like, your fingers, with some knives, if you have, like, a liner lock, like this one, you have to put your finger across the path of the blade to close it right there. So you have to be mindful of that. With this, that's never going to happen, because it's just going to close right there. Which is nice. I mean, that's an interesting design feature and it does work very well. Construction on the back, you got standoffs, little pillar standoffs right here. There's a lanyard hole that adds structural support. There is no backspacer on here. I'm usually a bigger fan of a backspacer like on this PM2. You got a big, nice backspacer. I just don't like, I mean, even on this, like the ZT, this is one of my favorite knives ever and it doesn't have a backspacer, but those are some pretty beefy standoffs like those things will take a beating but this knife I don't think this is meant to be like a real overbuilt beater knife like it's it's more of a uh, everyday carry kind of just to have with you for uh, everyday tasks right but it can get the job done it's a little small for my taste but you know not bad not bad if they made this in a slightly larger size I'd definitely buy it So uh, pros, the design is unique. It's a very unique design. If you are into just fidgeting with a knife, like if you like to open and close knives or just like you like to enjoy the mechanism of how a knife works, it's nice. It's got a uh, solid jimping across the back. It's kind of standard Spyderco jimping. I wouldn't say it's anything like super out of the ordinary. The build quality on here is great. It's uh, it's Spyderco standard. It was made in China, in Taichung. So uh, it's, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's good. The pocket clip is the standard. It's not the wire clip. It's the kind of spoon shaped clip. I'll have a shot of what this looks like in pocket it carries pretty deep um, right about up to like right below the lanyard hole I mean you got a, a chunk of knife sticking out so if you like a low rider you might put a different clip on here that curves back over the, the mounting hardware to get it in a deep carry but if you like to have like a little bit of purchase area like to grab onto then this will probably do it for you um, there's a lanyard hole if you're into that yeah the build quality is great um, construction is is solid uh, under cons I do not like this part of the blade right here this would probably be my number one complaint it's not quite a choil. Um, I don't know what I would call that. Like on, on this knife, you have you know, this jimping on here. You can choke up. You can get your hand in there to get precise, you know, work on, on the blade. On the smock, I don't, I guess it's a sharpening choil. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a weird harpoon shape right there. And uh, it doesn't really serve a purpose. If you try to choke up, you're going to cut yourself. It was an odd choice, and I'm not a big fan of it. The blade shape, I like the overall blade. I like the, the, the way the blade is built. Like, I like the shape of it. I just don't like this part right here. Like, just this indent, this cutout right here. And then I do wish the spider hole was bigger around here. I wish the access hole was out more like the PM2. Like, the PM2 is just really set out. I mean, it's just out there. It's functional. It's, it's function over form. 
and then with this it's more streamlined and it's kind of buried in there and you can use it from a pivoting thumb like the thumb deploy is not bad but trying to use your uh, your middle finger or your ring finger to deploy and yeah, right there so you just totally missed it so it becomes a very fine motor skill but you know you have that front flipper so that's not that bad Yeah, so in conclusion, I don't know. As as a collector's piece, I enjoy this purchase. As an everyday like use knife, as as something that I would use all the time, no, it's it's a little too small for me and uh, the deployment is a little tricky, but and I, I just I'm not a big fan of that blade shape. But overall build quality, I like it. Built well. It's a it feels like a very well produced piece of equipment. They did a great job on the knife itself. I just don't care for some of the design features but overall it's a cool looking knife um, it, it functions flawlessly like that finger flicker it's super easy to use it's just it's very enjoyable it's uh it's almost like having like a little tiny lightsaber in your pocket because it's just it's so fast like it's just there bam, open and then you know to close same kind of deal it's just closed again it's an interesting design i'm not really sold on it like it's i'll, I'll probably end up selling this one so if anybody's interested, shoot me a uh, shoot me an email. But uh, yeah, Spider Coast Mock. Thanks for checking in.